Director of Certification, who will introduce today's presenters. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. We are glad that you can join us this afternoon. I'm Valexia Hall, Managing Director of Certification for DBIA. During today's webinar, you will find out exactly what you'll need to become a DBIA certified credential holder and the value of carrying that credential. It is my pleasure to introduce your presenters today. Our presenters today are three members of the Design Build Certification Board and, of course, all DBIA certified professionals. Our first presenter is the Certification Board Chairman, Jeff Gagne. Jeff Gagne is Vice President for HNTB in Charlotte, North Carolina. He is responsible for overseeing alternate delivery methods for HNTB Design Build Advantage on a national level. Mr. Gagne has been involved with alternate delivery of transportation projects for over 20 years. He is a registered engineer and DBIA professional and also serves on the DBIA Transportation Committee. Our second presenter will be the Vice Chair of the Certification Board, William Hasbrook. Mr. Hasbrook has been a member of DBIA since its inception in 1993 and is also a DBIA professional. He is the Executive Vice President of OHL USA and Managing Director of Texas. Mr. Hasbrook brings to us almost 30 years of design build experience on both the construction and the design side and is a strong advocate of design build in the public and private sectors. Mr. Hasbrook will also serve as the newly elected Certification Board 12 um, Board Chair in 2014. And our final presenter is Board Member David Burton. Mr. Burton is a DBIA professional and is Vice President of Operations with DCK Worldwide LLC and is responsible for total management of the California operations as well as leading the justice market company-wide. He has over 30 years of experience in the construction industry and has an in-depth experience with many courthouses and correctional facilities, as well as a variety of other projects. Now, let's talk about what this webinar will cover. Today's agenda is, what is the credential? Why pursue it? What's in it for me? Who's eligible? What's the right credential for me? Who's getting certified? What are the requirements and what's the exam? How much? And what are the certification renewal requirements? And at the end of this presentation will be our Q&A session. Will I read your questions and a board member will address it. So, without further ado, I will turn the presentation over to the Design Build Board Chairman, Jeff Gagne. Thank you, Lexi. So what is a Design Build or a DBIA credential? It is the premier differentiator for Design Build professionals. It is the national standard for demonstrating design-build expertise. The credential itself is based upon a combination of education and training, experience and examination, and continuing education. Why pursue the credential? DBIA is the only measurable standard for design-build done right. Design-build now represents more than 40% of all project delivery in the United States. Owners desire credential holders on their projects, and more than 2,200 other professionals around the country have already obtained a DBIA credential. What does this credential mean for me and my company? The certification identifies you to owners and to our industry 
that you are an expert in design build project delivery. It distinguishes your firm as a company that is committed to excellence in design build. At the Design Build Institute of America, there are actually two types of designations, the associate DBIA and the design build professional. So who's earning their credentials? In the traditional full-time role on projects, we find design professionals, contractors, owners, and roles that participate maybe a little bit less than full-time on the projects, marketing and business development professionals, procurement specialists, operations managers, and then other roles that influence design build delivery such as our academia and legal professionals. So which credential is right for me? If your experience is hands-on, part of an integrated team, then the design build professional is the right one for you. If you are new to design build, or if your experience is oriented to pre-award or a role that's not involved necessarily in the integrated team environment, then the associate DBIA may be right for you. For the design build professional, the DBIA, and depending on your educational training, this credential requires anywhere from two to six years of project experience in a hands-on responsible role within an integrated design build team. For the associate DBIA, this person may not have the overall project experience yet, or they may be in a different role. You may have experience in phases of a design build project. For example, pre-award. You may be a seasoned veteran of an organization, but new to design build project delivery. Or you may be our new emerging professionals, such as our students who have come from concentrations uh, in design build project delivery. At DBIA, we believe that design build done right is more than just a good contract or appropriate risk allocation, although these are paramount. Best practices are for the entire integrated project team to understand the process, the expectations, and are committed to collaboration for the overall good of a project. So the or organizations investing in certification, they're public and private owners, federal and state agencies, construction and design professionals. They come from our major mar markets, water, wastewater, buildings, facilities, power, commercial industry, education, healthcare, and transportation. Howdy, my name is Bill Hasbrook, and I'm the chairman-elect for 2014. I'd like to take just a moment to thank you all for taking time from your busy schedules to learn more about what DBIA can do for you and what the credential means in the industry. I think you know something has significance when people ask for it by name, and you know you've really made it when you become associated generically, such as I think we all can admit that every facial tissue today is generically just called a Kleenex. While that may play havoc with trademarks, it does somewhat show that one has arrived and considered a benchmark in the industry. Well, I won't say that we're at that level yet, but we do have public agency solicitations, including this one on the slide now, from Indiana's Hamilton Southeastern School District, beginning to expressly encourage the use of DBIA best practices and inclusion of team members with DBIA professional certification. And this other example from Sharp Healthcare, which gives you, as you can see from here, 10 points just for DBI certifications on your evaluation. And how many of us have come close to, uh, to winning by just a few points? We may not be the Kleenex of project delivery, but we're nothing to sneeze at at all. Uh, due to time constraints also, I'll say that these are just two of the many examples that are out there in the industry today. So it's becoming very apparent that more and more in industry are willing to reward you for this certification. 
Jeff already went over the two credentials, and you might already have an idea which one is right for you. So let's briefly look at the requirements for obtaining each one, and let's start with the associates. Unlike the DBIA credential, which I'll discuss in a minute, obtaining the associate DBIA does not require hands-on field experience, as Jeff mentioned. Instead, this credential is focused on three key types of individuals who possess a different type of experience. First, it could be pre-award professionals focusing on critical aspects of the design-build process, such as business development and acquisition and procurement. Or it could be seasoned professionals who are new to design-build project delivery, but not new to the design and construction industry at all. And three, emerging professionals, such as reg recent college graduates, with relevant educational background in the architect and engineering and construction industry. So what does it really entail? Well, you first need an approved application. All candidates must submit a certification application for board review and approval. A degree in an approved field of study? We saw this a few, field, a few slides back. Uh, when we say that, we mean architecture, such as landscape and environmental, construction, such as construction management, building science, and so on, and engineering, such fields or disciplines as civil, electrical, mechanical, environmental, and so on. Please note that when you submit your application, if you have a degree, a copy of all the degrees that you have are required when submitting. Do you have a degree in an unapproved field of study or no degree at all? That's no problem either. You just need to prove three to six years of experience, respectively, in the design and construction industry. For the associate, we also do not require any elective courses and likewise don't require any industry references. But you will need to complete the DBI core courses, which I'll discuss in just a minute, and you need to pass a simple 1,000 question certification exam complete with essays. Did I get your attention with that one? <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's really a multiple guess test of 100 questions administered in testing sites located literally all over the nation. And David's going to go over that with you in more detail in just a few slides. You have two hours to take it, and it covers info from the core curriculum classes. So you're not going to be tested on concepts that you haven't already been taught in the DBIA classes that are required. So what is the difference between associate and the DBIA credential? Well, for the DBIA credential, you still need to have an approved completed application, and you need an approved degree, but now your experience requirements are just a little different. With an approved master's, you need two years of documented direct project experience in a hands-on responsible position in the design build project delivery, or an approved bachelor's degree with three years of documented experience, or an unrelated degree with six years of documented experience. Like the associate, you still need to have completed your DBIA core courses. Again, I'll go over those in a second. And you now need 18 hours of approved elected credits. On top of the elective hours, you'll also need to have three references. One of them must be an owner. And like the associate, you still need to pass a comprehensive 100 question exam in two hours. So. What are these core courses I keep talking about? Let me explain these in a little bit more detail. There are four. Fundamentals of Project Delivery is the first, and this course provides a general overview of the attributes of all major project delivery systems, procurement methodologies, and contracting approaches. It sets the stage for DBIA's other three courses, and by the way, I teach this class. The next, Principles of Design-Build Project Delivery. This course addresses the use of design-build as a project delivery method. Notice, I said project delivery method, not market, because design-build is not a market. It's a project delivery method like construction management, construction management at risk, design, bid, build, etc. This one focuses on essential concepts and characteristics as well as critical elements of the RFQ, RFP process and overall project management. It's an interactive problem-solving course where students can take part in a structured team learning environment, and I teach that one as well. The third one is design-build contracts and risk management. 
This course focuses on applying effective contracting language as well as insurance, bonding, and surety products, and strategies to successfully uh, deliver design-build project. Key issues relevant to public and private sector owners and design-build entity teams are addressed, making this seminar a must for anyone utilizing integrated project delivery. The course emphasizes providing relevant legal, contracting, insurance, and risk management knowledge, along with strategies for applying this knowledge to the evaluation of your existing risk mitigation measures, and is taught by national leaders in the construction legal field. Finally, post-award design build. To me, this one's sort of like the dog chasing the car. It caught it, now what does it do? You've just won, now what do you do with this design build project? This course addresses the use of design build as a project delivery method, focusing on essential concepts and characteristics, as well as critical elements of the RFQ, RFP process, and now overall project management. Like the one before it, it's interactive, problem-solving course where students can take part in a structured team learning environment. I have to tell you, when I took these courses, it took me over three years and I had to travel all over the country just to try and fit them in with my schedule. But now, as you're gonna see, we have some options. We offer numerous certification workshops throughout the year and they're located in different parts of the country. A workshop is a five-day intensive program including DBIA's four required uh, certification core courses. Uh, fundamentals of project delivery, principles of design build project delivery, design build contracts and risk management, and post-award design build. These are the projects or the classes that I just mentioned a second ago. And it also includes an exam prep course. It goes Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and includes breakfast and lunch each day. So no more hopping around the country for years like I had to do searching for a venue and time that fits your schedule. We've packaged it all up into one easy uh, class to attend. You now get convenient one-stop shopping, plus there's a bonus. You get the inherent networking that will last you a lifetime as you spend five days teaming with others in your industry. And I guarantee you're gonna make friends for life and you're gonna call on them many times in the future for help, advice, and support. So, what a great deal, huh? Where and when can I take these classes is probably what you're wondering. There's still a few times left in 2013. You can go to Cincinnati, Ohio, November 18th to 22nd, Seattle, Washington, December 2nd through 6th, Washington, D.C., December 9th through 13th, and Oakland, California, December 9th through 13th. I'm not sure it's published officially yet, but rumor has it that in 2014, in San Francisco, January 13th to 17th, Denver, February 3rd to 7th, Orlando, February 24th to 28th, Seattle, February 24th to 28th, Atlanta, March 3rd to 7th, Long Beach, California, March 31st to April 4th, Kansas City, April 21st to 25th, Nashville, 20, uh, I'm sorry, Nashville, Tennessee, May 5th to the 9th, Dallas, Texas, June 2nd to 6th, Lansing, Michigan, June 23rd to 27th, Laurel, Maryland, July 7th to 11th, Indianapolis, Indiana, August 4th to 8th, Virginia Beach, Virginia, September 22nd to 26th, Portland, Oregon, September 29th to October 3rd, and Cincinnati, Ohio, November 3rd to 7th. And I bet you are probably hurriedly trying to write those down, but don't worry about that. Just check back the DBI website in November and the official 2014 list is gonna be posted. So no reason to write them down now. But wait, there's more. We also host university boot camps. The same intensive five day schedule, but in a boot camp uh, where DBIA has teamed up with top universities. So what's the difference that teaming with universities provides? In addition to the four core courses and exam prep that we just went over, these programs are expanded to include guest lecturers, specific networking events, and specific social activities. Again, 
Check the DBIA website in November for official dates and location, but here's a sneak peek at what I think is coming up in 2014. At George Mason University on March 10th through the 14th in Herndon, Virginia. Cal Poly University, July 21st through the 25th at San Luis Obispo, California. And Cal Poly again, September 8th to 12th at San Luis Obispo. But again, make sure that you check the website in November to ensure that those dates are still current and what's coming up. But there's still more options, and David Burton, our certification board chair elect for 2015, is now going to tell you about in-house company-based training and more. David? Uh, yes, uh, the DBIA offers a great opportunity uh, with in-house training, uh, our company-based training. Uh, this will allow you to uh, have a workshop that will uh, – bring more employees uh, centralized, save on travel, uh, and give you an opportunity to promote the whole uh, attitude and uh, camaraderie of design build. One of the main goals of design build, design build done right, is nurturing that teamwork and, and uh, bringing the camaraderie uh, home to roost. And through a company-based training, you can promote this through your employees. Uh, you could also use it as a uh, marketing tool. Uh, owners, designers, contractors are all involved in design build. By inviting uh, potential team members, by inviting owners uh, that uh, you have the opportunity to work with, you can promote the whole uh, design build uh, attitude and openness uh, and develop a, a uh, bond through these workshops that can help lead you to work down the road. Uh, it's important that, uh, you know, everyone on the team is, is bonded by the attitude and approach to the project, and then we feel that through these in-house trainings, there's no better way to promote this attitude and it, it be developed from the top and worked it throughout your company. What is the exam? It's a, a curriculum-based exam that makes sure that uh, through the core classes as described by Bill, uh, that you understand and master the uh, practices that are uh, taught in these uh, workshops. It, the exam is important uh, and is constantly monitored and evaluated because the certification is important to all of us, and the certification board is constantly monitoring this exam and monitoring the process to make sure that the integrity of the certification is withheld. The exam format, uh, as Bill mentioned, it's 100 questions, uh, multiple choice, and we suggest that you sign up as quickly after the, the workshops as possible so that you retain the information that you've worked uh, together and uh, can get that behind you. The uh, exam is given by the uh, Prometrics testing centers, and there's over 300 nationwide. So it should be relatively easy to find a location near you uh, sign up for the exam and take that shortly after your, your training sessions. The exam content, it's made up of the, the basic uh, premise of design build and goes through each uh, type of, of project delivery and methods. Uh, such as project management, you're introduced to DBIA best practices and shown processes and forms and procedures that will help you to promote the process and to enforce it throughout the project. Uh, contract and legal, you're educated on the uh, compliance of design build, what works and doesn't work, educates you on what's enforceable and not enforceable, through design build contracts and leads you towards a successful project. General attributes, you know, what are the, the pros and cons of design build? 
helps you to understand how the process works and helps you to promote that process uh, either as a client an owner to designers and, and contractors or as a contractor and designer uh, to your owner. Project delivery. You know, we understand in the DBIA that every project isn't perfect for a design build and through these courses uh, we educate you on the delivery method, uh, how the process works, what, what makes it the right process for your project uh, we understand there's many agencies that through budgeting reasons, through uh, design and approval methods, uh, make it difficult uh, for design build. But through these uh, core classes, you'll be educated on the, the delivery method, how that it's uh, used, and which process best works for your project. Uh, estimating and specifications. You know, we give specific uh, classes on uh, estimating uh, and uh, the specifications, and again, how those uh, work within a design build project. It's important uh, on every project, but especially in design build, that when you're working with your owners and, and clients, that you're keep keeping them up to date on budgets. Uh, you know, everyone's concerned on budget and schedule, uh, and DBA through their core classes. Uh, educate you on how to uh, follow that process and keep everyone up to date and keep uh, the whole uh, team on point and towards a successful project. Teaming and team organization. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, design build done right is all about promoting attitude and camaraderie within the team. Uh, it's almost a, a could be described as a faith-based construction. We, we work together and we believe in each other and we've got to trust that each one can do the right thing. And through the DBA best practices and the teaching through the core uh, courses, uh, everyone understands the importance of that teaming and the importance of the team organization. It also helps uh, to understand the, the process of how the designers work with the contractors and what's a, they walk through what's expected between the teams, between a designer and a contractor and a contractor and owner and a designer and an owner. Uh, so it is, it's great information to understand. Uh, procurement. They walk you through the various processes of procurement, uh, two-phase, single-phase, single-phase being a quals-based delivery, a two-phase being shortlist. Uh, procurement, uh, which is certainly preferred by all of us, versus uh, having a, a you know, design bid build project with a massive number of bidders. Uh, and then also within the uh, exam content, they go over the ethics and professionalism, which is uh, re reinforced within the core classes and, uh, and again, uh, reinforced through the taking, taking of the exam. The uh, results, uh, the, once the exam is taken, you have to have a 66% pass rate. Uh, it's a pass-fail, so you have instant feedback. Uh, and again, we, we are constantly tweaking the test to keep the uh, integrity of the certification. Uh, there's an 89% pass rate. So it's, it's not a, a, a give me test. You have to go to the classes, focus, understand, retain the information uh, to pass the test. And that's important to DBIA that we uphold the integrity of that exam. Uh, it's a small investment. As you, you heard Bill mention and, and uh, Jeff mention, more and more entities are going to design build. It's, it's changing our industry uh, and uh, the importance of understanding the teaming and understanding the attitude and the openness and, and uh, communication of design build is an important factor. Uh, they mentioned private owners such as CCA, Kaiser, Sharp, uh, and there are several federal owners uh, that have gone to the uh, uh, DBIA practices. And it's a small investment. Uh, to gain advantage, which everyone's looking for these days, is how do you how do you create a differentiator between you and the other companies? 
Well, DBIA can give you that differentiator. And through the certification of your employees, uh, that can be the, the separator between you uh, and the next guy. The, the investments are, uh, as we mentioned, the, the in-house training is the best savings. Uh, if you are able to pull together en enough employees uh, or, as we mentioned, to call upon other companies and, and join together and form a big enough group and DBIA will come to you, uh, then it's also uh, measured against your participation or membership to DBIA. So there's various ways to save, and uh, DBI will work with you on how those uh, costs are, are built and applied to your company. Uh, renewal. Now, part of the, the certification and its integrity is making sure that the people that hold that uh, certification are uh, up to date and can and represent the, the present technology of the industry. So it's important for each credential holder to uh, maintain their certification and have a renewal every two years, which requires a 24-hour uh, accrual of education credits. There's uh, many ways to gain those education credits. Uh, and DBA has uh, developed uh, ways to, to help you in that. We understand that cost is a factor with any company. And uh, there's, besides the D DBA classes and DBA credits, there's other associated members, such as AIA, uh, uh, there's uh, AGCs, there's uh, ABCs. Uh, many of these companies, as you watch the luncheons and, and uh, activities that they put together, uh, you can gain hours and accredited, accredited education hours uh, toward your renewal. Another great way to uh, gain hours is DBIA will work with you in your own in-house best practices, and uh, they can certify your own in-house training to uh, correspond with education credit hours. And so through uh, cooperation with DBIA and evaluation of your own in-house best practices, we can assist you in developing in-house training that can apply towards the 24 hours needed for your uh, continuing education. If you look at the, the map, it gives you an idea that uh, DBA is growing uh, swiftly. Uh, almost every state in the nation uh, has accredited members. Uh, these numbers are growing constantly. Um, and it's a, it's a great way to, again, pursue projects that uh, under DBA best practices will have a select bid list. Uh, uh, qualifications-based awards, and all the things that we look, look for uh, to create projects that we know can be a success for all. So that's pretty much the uh, DBA uh, information on the certification, and I will uh, just wanted to put up here on the screen uh, the information for getting hold of Alexia Hall, the Managing Director and Educator for Certification. Uh, she's a great resource. Uh, if you have any questions or uh, would like to set up an opportunity to review your in-house best practices or uh, anything relevant to certification, uh, again, don't hesitate to contact her by email or a phone number. Uh, and with that, we'll go to questions. Thank you, David. Um, again, that does conclude the presentation portion. Uh, we'll now move on to the question and answer portion of this webinar. Um, I will read your questions, and a member of the board will answer them. So let's start. 
Uh, Bill, I believe this will be a great question for you. The question is, if I am a licensed architect in another country and currently working as a government contractor, how can I get the DBIA credential? And can I validate some of my credits? Thanks, Lexi. Uh, good question. Uh, I'm not sure the country of origin is all that pertinent with your degree as long as you can show that it's an accredited degree in the country in which you, you got it. And with your application process, you have to uh, submit a copy of your, your uh, diploma. So I think you're covered there. Um, as far as getting your uh, DBI credential and validating some of the credits, the rules are still the same as far as taking the core courses and your electives. If you're going to take some electives that you don't necessarily see or specifically provided by DBIA, either in a, a formal training session or in some of our regional, national, or local uh, classes or seminars or webinars such as this, you can always submit uh, to Valexia and ask her, uh, give her an example of what it is that you're wanting to take in the way of continuing education and get a reading from DBIA if they would accept that or not. Uh, as it pertains to uh, elective hours. I found many times in the past when I submit things with other organizations, they do have a direct design build content, and I don't believe in those cases I've ever had that rejected. So I can also get credit toward my credential by taking uh, other classes, again, provided that I get the class pre-approved by DBIA for credit before I, before I take it. Thanks, Bill. Well, since you're on a roll, I think I'll give you the next question. This question asks, how many states on average are looking uh, towards DBIA certification, and is it becoming more of the go-to method? I guess I'm a little confused over the question on how many states are looking toward DBIA certification. I can take that two ways. One, it can mean how many states allow design build, and today, Every state in the union allows design build in the public sector in some form or fashion. As far as certification and how many states are requiring this and, and using it actually as a go-to method to ensure that they're getting qualified design builders, I'm not sure that we have those statistics yet on specific states because there's so many government agencies and pseudo-government agencies and organizations that right now it's almost impossible to try and, and track those sort of statistics. But suffice it to say, it uh, with design build here to stay, um, many of the states, and since they all allow design build, many of the states are looking toward this as one way to differentiate you from other people in being an expert in the design build uh, project delivery method. All right, thanks, Bill. All right, Jeff, I think I have to throw a question at you. The question is, what if you have a degree in medical field? Is that an approved field of study? If not, then why? All right, good question. Uh, the board over the years has, has evaluated all the uh, different types of degrees and programs uh, the board also uh, consists of Dr. Molinar uh, at the University of Colorado, who helps us as well with the different programs that are available uh, from universities. If your specific degree is not identified on there, you are welcome to submit that to the board for evaluation, and we will do that completely with the board and make a determination if we feel that that degree is relevant to the the design build industry that you're, you're participating in. Uh, most of the degrees, as Bill read in his portion of the presentation, were related to construction management, the design, the legal side, and, and, the, uh, and those in academia and, and graduate level studies. So that's kind of the focus it's been. I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that your degree would not be uh, evaluated because we, we will look at them all. All right, thank you, Jeff. All right, our next question is, uh, what is our next question? Oh, is this certification approved by the federal government? Bill, you want to take that one? Love to. 
Um, I'm not sure what uh, what we mean by approved by the federal government. I'm not sure they approve or disapprove per se. I can tell you that um, as a longtime member of Society of American Military Engineers and from the DOD perspective, and by the way, DBIA and SAMI work hand-in-hand on a federal symposium every year. Um, I teach literally or were, was teaching literally worldwide uh, a design build for the DOD. And I can tell you that the government has said, again from the DOT side, that they would prefer the majority of projects to use the design build project delivery method if practical. So all the commanders are being held responsible for that. So certainly the federal government has embraced design build. Uh, as we meet in these uh, meetings and we teach both the the uh, government, uh, we used to call them blue suitors in the Air Force, uh, as we meet with the government uh, uh, DOD uh, leaders and uh, industry, it's it's uh, very apparent in the fact that uh, Society of American Military Engineers has affiliated itself with DBIA. It's it's very apparent that it is an accepted credential within at least the DOD side of the federal federal government. I'm not sure if it's necessarily approved because I'm not sure what organization within the federal government would approve a certification or not, but I can tell you it is certainly uh, recognized and accepted within the Department of Defense. And Bill, the FBOP, the Corps of Engineers, and the GSA also uh, recognized the certification. Okay, thanks. Um, I missed one question, and I, the question was, how long is this certification application good for, and how long do you have to take the, the test? Well, the application, especially an approved application, has no expiration date. Um, you typically have a year to two years to take the certification exam um, as the curriculum is in place and nothing has been changed and those questions are anchored from those core courses. So you have flexibility in, uh, up to two years to take uh, the online exam. However, when you register to take the exam, immediately you have uh, 60 days to actually sit for the exam. So we always encourage folks that when you register, try to be able to make that exam sitting um, because you have uh, 60 days to take that. Okay. Uh, there's another question, and I believe we answered this early in the presentation on what the percentage rate is for uh, passing the test. And, and again, it's, you know, it's like 89%. It's very high. Um, because it is curriculum based and it's um, professionals in the industry that understand design building have been um, actually educated, tested, and have the experience component as well. The next question is, I took two of the four courses a few years ago in 2010. Are they still valid for credit towards certification? The answer is yes. The two core courses uh, have not changed. They remain intact. And so 2010 up are still approved to use towards your core course curriculum requirement. All right. Uh, Jeff, I'll give this to you. Uh, the requirement, three to six years design and construction, is that three to six design and three to six construction. Yeah, what we're looking for in pro overall project experience is a minimum of three individual design build projects where you had a hands-on uh, role uh, as part of the integrated team. And no, it's it's just a total of three to six, well, I think it actually goes two to six years depending on your type of degree if you have an advanced degree in alternate delivery or not. And uh, it's just three separate projects that would encompass a total of at least that three to two to six years. Jeff, this is Bill, and I might also make a comment that when you look at the number of years of experience, if you have overlapping time periods, you don't get credit for the portion that overlaps it. You don't get credit for that twice. And if you may have been on a design build project for um, let's say it was a 24-month project and you show up 
for a meeting once a week um, for two years, that doesn't necessarily count as two years of design build experience. You actually only claim the amount of experience that you're actively on the project, um, actively involved in the design build portion of the project. Uh, thanks. The next question is, I believe it's for me, as uh, we look over the administration requirements to submit to the board. The question is, are references submitted at the same time as the initial application, or are they submitted after the application slash experience has been approved? I assume an application must be on file with the DBIA before a reference can complete their form. This is an excellent question. When submitting your application, there you will need to list the three references that are going to be submitting on your behalf. Immediately upon submitting that application, you would need to share our online reference link. DBIA, we ask a seri series of questions to that reference on your design build experience. That information is submitted directly to DBIA National, and before the board reviews an application, they must see all the references along with the application. So you cannot get your application approved without having your references, especially an owner reference. Okay, uh, next question. A lot of them for me, huh? Is there a waiting period if you must retake the exam a second time? Typically, you could take it as early as two weeks. Um, your results are shared with you immediately at the ProMetric Testing Center. That information is immediately shared with us here at National. A member of the certification team will then send you an update, sort of a certification update, to say what the cost is to resit, resit which is $400 and then you'll be able to reschedule yourself again in a local testing center. All right. Um, um, Bill, you may have answered this already. Um, if someone says their degree is from Mexico. Yeah, and I think, uh, I think that's probably a follow-on to the earlier question on on saying a degree from a foreign country. No, that's that's perfectly acceptable, and and we do have people with degrees uh, literally from all over the world. Again, it just has to be an accredited degree program, and when you submit your application, make sure you submit uh, your proof that you have that degree with it. Okay, thank you. Uh, David, right on time, this question is for you. Um, have you seen a trend in more and more folks becoming uh, certified? Do you see more and more owners becoming certified? Absolutely. That's uh, the trend has been growing annually. Uh, I believe we're we've just passed 2,000 uh, certificate certified pro professionals. Is that correct, uh, mm -hmm. Lexi? That's and you. yes. And uh, a big push from DBI. We recognized years ago that. Uh, we had a great conference, and we, we had a lot of camaraderie and a lot of teaming going on, uh, but the majority of the room was uh, contractors and uh, designers, which was uh, great for uh, coming together and, and educating ourselves and, and uh, developing that teamwork, but it wasn't uh, bringing us much work. And DBI recognized that we were, our, everyone's goal was to promote uh, design build through the industry, so uh, through the years, we have been focusing on uh, design build or for owners. And in fact, uh, we have a scholarship program that if there is a client interested in, in uh, promoting design build within their pro construction program, we'll provide a scholarship to get that owner to the conferences uh, to help them educate themselves so that we can promote it uh, throughout the industry. Uh, and, uh, you know, design build is growing regularly. Uh, I think in today's construction world, uh, you know, our market is changing. If you look at the, the time frames that it takes to uh, develop and land a job these days, it's all kind of built around design build practices, the, the early teamwork, the design assist, the, the uh, 
you know, the con- working from the initial programming and start. So many owners are jumping on the design build bandwagon, and I think that the DBIA certification uh, is a great benefit to any company. All right, thanks, David. Um, this is a question regarding references, but it speaks more to the approval process to sit for the exam. The question reads, do the three reference letters need to be submitted in order to receive approval, uh, to obtain approval, to take the exam? And as I mentioned earlier, you must have your reference letter submitted along with your application in order for the board to review and, and make an approval decision on your application. However, the requirements to sit for the exam, you must have a board-approved application on file in order to be eligible to sit for the certification exam meaning you can submit it to DBIA National, but if your reference hasn't been submitted and the board hasn't done its due diligence in reviewing and approving your application because some things are missing, then you're not eligible to sit until you receive official word that your application has been approved. How We did make an additional um, update when it comes to sitting for the exam. For candidates who are pursuing the DBIA, the Design Build, credential, um, who are currently, their application is currently before the board for their review. If you have um, an approved uh, degree in the approved field of study, you are automatically eligible to sit for that exam with the understanding that that doesn't guarantee that you're going to be approved for the DBIA credential, but it does say at minimum you meet the associate DBIA requirement. So that would be the exception. So if you have a degree in construction management, your application is currently before the board, you can sit for the exam because at minimum you meet the associate DBIA requirement. Okay, another question is, is there a self-study track for the core courses? The answer is, Right now, no, it isn't. However, as a part of the certification workshops or the university boot camps, you do take an exam prep course. That course definitely prepares you to sit for the certification exam. That exam prep course is also available online. And uh, attendees who have registered or have taken the workshop or the university boot camp receive a discount for that online offering if they want to go and use it as a refresher. All right, here's a question I'm going to put poll to the board. Do you have association with NCEES for engineering, engineers to easily submit verified education and experience during as part of the application process? Yeah, Lexi, I can take that. This is Jeff. Thanks, um, Jeff. Yeah, I, I am also registered with NCES. Uh, I would I would think that once you look at an application for DBIA, you would see that it, the amount of information that you would need for this versus a PE exam is significantly different. I do not. I don't see that we would uh, need to have that interaction with NCES at this time. Uh, what we're looking for you to do is, is provide that you meet one of those degrees and provide us a copy of your degree uh, as verification of your, uh, of your education. The experience itself, uh, I think you've seen hopefully during the, the presentation that it needs to be very specific to your role on a design build job that you're submitting as experience. And it is my expectation that what you've written in an NCES type of record uh, would would probably be a little bit more generic than what we were looking for. All right. Thanks, Jeff. I'm going to move around a little bit as well. Let me... Uh, We have a question here. Uh, The question reads, I have the education and experience to satisfy the requirements 
of the DBIA professional certification. However, the contractor I work for has been reluctant to pay for my certification given my professional status as only having graduated from my Master's of Architecture two and a half years ago. How can I communicate to my company that this is a good investment? Lucky, I'll give a stab at that one. <clears throat> it's, um, I'm not sure that that's a question that can be answered since we don't know your company and don't know the specific person within your company that's not allowing this. I will say in my experience that many companies, if, if they're willing to pay for your certification to begin with, count yourself lucky because many require you to keep your own professional certification uh, uh, coming out of your own checkbook. I guess one of the easiest uh, things is uh, share with them this webinar and hopefully you've taken some notes and try and go through them, uh, the notes with them and explain to them what's happening in the industry. There's also more information on the DBIA website and I'm sure if they have specific questions, you can always get hold of Lexi at DBIA either on phone or through email using the contact information that we gave earlier. But I'm not sure there's necessarily really a, uh, uh, an answer for that other than we are showing, as we discussed today, the trend on uh, the acceptance of the DBIA credential and also in the industry where DBIA is going as a, a procurement method. And there's no doubt it's not going away. In fact, uh, it's getting stronger day-to-day -day in many different industries. Uh, but through the DBIA website and, any, and, and this webinar and any follow-on questions going to the DBIA staff themselves, I suggest that you, that you start with that. All right, we have another question that reads, I have an associate DBIA and wish to change to the DBIA professional certification. How do I do this, and what are the requirements? Great I question. Could handle, question. I could probably handle that one as well, and Lexi, back me up if I'm wrong. Um, but I kind of went over that a little bit in, the, in my portion of the webinar, and you are going to have to uh, reapply for the full credential. And the difference between the two is you've already satisfied all the parts for the associate DBIA, so you're not asked to do that again. Um, so you're, you're still going to need a new approved uh, application, though, showing that you're going for this credential. Uh, you now, because of the degree experience, remember we said the master's, you need two years of documented experience in hands-on design build or a bachelor's approved degree with three years hands-on or an unrelated degree with six years. So you've got that extra caveat in there. Um, you've already completed your DBIA core courses to get your associate, but now you also need 18 hours of approved elective credits on top of what you already have. And on top of those credits, you also need three references, and one of them has to be, be an owner. So there's those few extra things in there, but it is going to require a new application uh, to show that your intent that you want to go toward that uh, different credential and that you have complied with those additional requirements. That's perfect, Bill. Thank you. We have another question, and David, I'm going to throw it to you. This question says, can you explain the elective courses uh, more, what qualifies as an, as an elective course? Um. The elective courses are uh, trainings or uh, courses or uh, seminars that demonstrate design build processes. Uh, typically, uh, a lot of them are based around uh, lessons learned or best practices relevant to DBA best practices. Um, if you go to any of the conferences, like the national conference coming up here in November, uh, every day there are multiple sessions uh, of uh, demonstrations and courses that uh, will educate you on the the rights, the wrongs, the goods, the bads, the uh, you know understand lessons learned of actual projects. Uh, there's legal uh, presentations from uh, uh, devoted lawyers who are committed to DBIA that help. Uh, explain claims and, and processes and contracts that we all have to deal with in the design build uh, arena. Uh, one of the things that I forgot to mention within my slides was that these 
uh, elective credits are also available through the DBIA website. So when after these conferences are over, if you were not able to attend the conference, for a nominal charge, you can get online and uh, take as a webinar and review the classes that were given at the conference, which is an excellent way to, to gain your elective credits and uh, keep up with your uh, renewal of your certification. Uh, and as I mentioned, you know, other uh, organizations such as uh, AIA, uh, Bill mentioned SAMI, uh, a lot of these organizations will combine with DBA and do a presentation based on applicable standards, uh, how those associations intermingle with design build, how their processes work. Uh, so just review uh, the, uh, the scope and, and agenda of a course. And if you have questions, that's where you call Lexi. Uh, use that number that we showed you and, and call her and ask her and review it with her, and she can let you know over the phone if it's an approved credit uh, and uh, can get that information to you. Thanks, David. Uh, the next question is relates to uh, renewal and continuing education. The question reads, has the continuing education always been a requirement for the associate DBIA? Um, the, quest, the answer is yes. For both credentials, you needed 24 um, continuing education credits to renew your certification. Um, the second part of this question says, I've recently received a renewal notice and I've served on a cabinet or local chapter for over two years. I've also attended many chapter programs. What is the method of accounting for your CEUs? You will simply just fill out the CEU renewal form. You can attach supporting documentation to support those. In terms of DBIA regional or national programs, we will have access to confirm your attendance um, in those matters, so you would submit that. But otherwise, we will work with you and partner with you if you had any questions on how to renew. The next question, uh, Jeff, I'll give it to you. The question says, once you request an in-office training, how long until you can get a course or instructor? Oh, you're passing that one off to me, but uh, you're going to have to back me up, Lexi. Um, when, once you submit uh, for the company-based training, it'll be on a, a, an availability of when those instructors uh, can be available. The other thing that we can do is cater uh, who the instructors may be. If you're a transportation-oriented business, we'll do our very best to get instructors that come from the transportation market, so to better align with the business that you're looking for. Lexi, do you have any more about a time period that it might be? You're absolutely right. Um, I wanted to mention there are under resources, there are some documents that will be there for your reference, one of which is an in-house training request form. We ask that you fill that out and we sort of assess what your needs are and we give you a call in less than 24 hours to actually um, find out what your needs are and then we work with you based on your availability and ca calendar to try to get the best uh, instructor available to put the training on for you. So we work with you to meet your timeline. And Lexi, uh, this is Bill. I might also add that I think one of the benefits of this and the fact that there isn't just a cadre of, of trained instructors that are sitting there, that that's all they are, are instructors. Instead, you get trained instructors that are experts in the industry. And before they are certified by DBIA as an instructor, uh, they have to uh, be thoroughly researched and trained and so what you're getting is you're getting the best the industry has to offer. And these people are doing jobs out in the industry uh, full time, and they're doing this as a service to the professional community. So how many of us have had, had uh, classes in college where you're sitting there listening to the professor preaching from a book, and you're thinking, man, this dude has never had a job in his life, but yet he's trying to tell me how to go out there and how things should be done. That's not the case with uh, the DBIA instruction and the quality of the instructors you're going to be getting. These people are not just preaching to you out of these books. They've done it. And I think some of the biggest value 
And the feedback we continue to get as instructors in the classes is how much the students uh, appreciate and enjoy the personal um, uh, interaction and experience from the instructor because you're not just going over the curriculum, you're saying, hey, this is how it applied to me and this is what I did in this instance. So while it may be uh, somewhat concerning or upsetting if you're thinking, wow, I'd really like to push this through immediately, and uh, you may have to wait a little bit longer than you thought to get uh, one of these instructors in, I think you're going to find it's uh, well worth the wait to, to uh, be able to rely on industry professionals like this in a training session. And um, I'll add on to that, Bill, that 85% um, of our skilled and seasoned instructors are also DBIA credential holders, and the other ones are working towards their certification as well, because that's one of our requirements. All right. Question comes in saying, uh, is there an expiration period or during for having taken the core courses and being eligible to take the exam. There really isn't an expiration period to take the exam. Um, the core courses um, stay in place and uh, you take the exam once you're approved with your application, but there really is no expiration date on that. I might offer a comment on that too as well, Lexi, is as a professional instructor in a past life, there's something called the uh, uh, the law of recency, and you do what you most recently remember having learned, seen, or done. And I can tell you that what DBIA teaches you is uh, best practices. And one of the struggles I had uh, years back when I first went through to take the test is I've been doing this now for over 30 years, doing design build. And I don't always, as, as many of us I think will probably admit, I don't always experience best practices in the real world. And one problem you have to uh, be aware of as a professional in the industry is I don't want to perpetuate bad practices. So when I first took the prep exam and I was answering questions, um, I didn't do very well on, on the practice test because I was answering some of my experiences versus what DBI is trying to teach us in the way of best practices. So while you your core courses are still good, my suggestion to you is take the test as fast as you can after you take those so that the best practices are still in your head, and hopefully you're trying to apply those after you take the, the classes and are now aware that that is a best practice. But it would probably help you uh, in your exam taking it as fast as possible afterwards so that you don't let maybe some bad experience and bad practices in your own professional, personal life uh, interfere with your, your professional test-taking ability, I'll, I'll say. So while they're there forever, my uh, or good forever, my suggestion is uh, it probably will help you on testing while the best practices are still clear in your mind and up front to go ahead and take that test as fast as possible. So, Bill, why don't you take this question as well? Can the associate DBIA certification be converted to a full DBIA certification when minimum requirements are met in the future if an individual does not currently have three projects spanning the two- to six-year time frame, such as two projects in three to four years? Well, and that's, that's a good question. Now, let me answer it somewhat ger generically. Um, when the application comes into the review board, if there is anything that it doesn't make sense or is missing, we will kick it back and give you a chance to explain it or provide further information. Many times on the ones that I've reviewed is they've got some good information in there, but it's not exactly complete. And while there has to be uh, some minimum guideline in there, some people will say, well, how come it's uh, – uh, don't take this literally, but why would somebody say it's six years instead of four? Well, there has to be a timeline uh, somewhere to set standards. And so we try to adhere to that as much as possible. Uh, now, having said that, we do look at each individual application, and there are some extenuating circumstances involved with all of them, and some people can make some, some pretty good cases. So I would say don't let that necessarily hold you back. You can always ask the question before you decide to submit to see how it might be received by the board. But normally as a rule of thumb, when we ask you for a specific minimum set of requirements, 
if those requirements aren't met, the application is going to be kicked back to you to either uh, meet those requirements or provide us an explanation as to why you are deviating from it. And then the board uh, isn't so stringent that it doesn't sit there and consider deviations. Uh, we just have to discuss it, make sure that whatever deviation we make still upholds the integrity of the credential. All right, Jeff, I have uh, actually two questions, and they're somewhat similar, and you can address both of them. Um, what if all the years of experience and design build are in one project? Can you apply with one project rather than three? The other question is, what if you worked on three projects, but most of your experience is from one longer project? Is this acceptable, or is there a minimal amount of time for each project needed? All right, this goes back a little bit to some answers that Bill actually gave. It is the minimum requirement that there are three separate projects, also with the time period that's associated. I think Bill also mentioned uh, there's probably a lot of explanation that has to be given if your projects are concurrent and you're trying to take credit for those. We're pretty we review those pretty closely about what your real hands on in a responsible role as part of that integrated team experience really is in those situations. So they're going to be evaluated real closely. Uh, we are looking for more than just one project. Uh, one project is not in our, in our, in the board's opinion, uh, an overall uh, designation of, of what we're looking for for professional experience, and that's why we put the three on there. But I think, it, as Bill noted, there, you know, we're not absolute, and it's not without uh, some further explanation. Uh, the board uh, may evaluate. Uh, let's see. The second part of your question was the um, refresh me on the last part, Lexi. I'm wondering if you worked on three projects, but most of your experience is from one longer project? Yeah, the time period of the project is not necessarily overly important to us. We understand uh, there are very small design build job projects that, that are very short in duration, which is part of why owners use them in the first place is rapid delivery. Uh, so we certainly understand that that can, uh, can happen. All, again, what we're looking for is specific hands-on experience in, in a leadership role as part of that integrated team. I might make one comment too, Jeff, is one thing we look for is the fact that you're on a design-build procurement project uh, but not performing anything in relation to design-build does not automatically give you credit. So, for instance, say I am a uh, project manager that I, all the design is done, we're in the field, and I show up and I'm maybe finishing up some punch list items or maybe I'm finishing up just a little bit at the end, but I'm not involved with any integration between design and construction. I'm not meeting with the stakeholders. Um, I'm not meeting uh, with the client per se other than maybe just a weekly catch up. So does that really classify or is that classified as I now have design build experience? Those are the kind of things that we're looking for. Be specific in your application. Let us know exactly what it is you're doing and how that is directly uh, a part of the integrated design build portion of that project. Uh, we've seen many applications recently where uh, somebody is fulfilling just a regular duty, but it's not specific to design build at all, and that duty could have been done on any project, and they actually had no design build interaction within within the project. So. Uh, in that instance, that application wouldn't get credit for it, no matter what the duration uh, is of that project. They wouldn't get credit for that one project going toward their design build time. And as I mentioned before, as you look at uh, if it's a longer or a shorter project, you're also only going to get credit for the design build portions that you're, uh, you're actually involved with in the project. So if it's a, a one-year project and you've gone to that site two times, you don't get one year of experience. You'll get uh, however many days of experience or months or weeks or however it figures out uh, that you actually were uh, involved in design-build uh, integration. 
So I, I hope that helps. All right, our last question, um, I guess I'll take this one, is are the core courses required to be completed prior to submitting the application? Uh, the answer is no. There, a lot of candidates prefer to know up front before they make the investment in taking the core courses that they are approved. So you are more than welcome to submit your application and upon approval decide you want to register. You can note on the application under the core courses requirements that you will register, you know, later. So, no, that is not a requirement. All right. It seems that we've tackled all the questions, and so that will conclude the Q&A portion. I hope you all found this information helpful, and please know that the certification team is available to answer any additional questions uh, you have and certainly ready to be of service in helping you obtain um, our DBIA credentials. With that said, I'll turn it back over to Mahisha for final closing. Well, thank you to each attendee for joining us uh, for today's work webinar, uh, and a special thanks to our presenters, David Burton, Jeff Gagne, and Bill Hasbrook. Uh, please remember that you will be directed to an evaluation directly following this presentation. Also, this presentation will be archived and available for viewing in the next couple of days. Please feel free to share this information with colleagues that were not able to make today's live webinar. Please also visit www.dbia.org for a listing of all upcoming DBIA webinars. Lastly, please join us for some upcoming DBIA events. October 22nd, we will be hosting another webinar, Proposed Solution Does Not Equal Problem Solved. October 29th, another webinar, Developing Procurement Documents for Progressive Design Build Projects. November 4th through 6th is our DBIA Design Build Conference and Expo at La in Las Vegas, Nevada. And on November 12th, an additional webinar on DBIA contracts focus on the prime relationship, communication between the owner and design builder. And please don't forget to download the handouts under the Resources tab. And as uh, Valexia and the gentleman from the DBIA Certification Board indicated, we are always here and happy to answer any questions that you might have. So once again, thank you for joining us, and we hope to have you back for another webinar.